monthly basis. Um, just oh, hold up, just to see where we are. And there we go. How about that? And life's events. So tonight's topic is what we're going to touch on is healthcare. Hmm. We've heard a lot about that over the past ten years. Are you guaranteed health care? No, it doesn't say that anywhere in the Constitution. Should you get health care? Probably. Should it be paid by your employer? Mm, I guess that's up to debate. Should you pay for it yourself? Again, that's up to debate. We do know that prescription drugs and the pharmaceutical companies, uh, as well as our doctor and Medicare, I can just go on and on, name it, is way out of control. So what is really the answer to this? Is it to, the Affordable Care Act was obviously not the answer because it was a complete and total disaster. I mean, premiums are going up by the day. We have lost so much money on this. People are not getting the coverage. I mean, for somebody like me, it was going to cost like $15,000 a year before they started paying for anything. Um, so then the next question is, do we go to single payer? Well, single payer is going to cause a massive tax increase. I mean, like millions and millions of dollars on top of the dollars that you're already paying for Medicare, Social Security, um, not to mention your FICA, your state taxes, your local taxes. Uh, I can just go on and on with it. So what then is the answer? The problem or excuse me, the solution to the problem is not government. Uh, government is the problem. We have to keep government out of health care like we do on most things in our everyday lives. Like, we have to have more deregulation. The FCC, I'm, I'm sorry, I went off topic here. It's supposed to be mental health care. The government has to stay out of health care. Um, they have to leave it up to the insurance companies and to the employers and to the individuals. Not an individual mandate, which is nothing but just another tax increase. How fair is it to tax somebody who already can't afford health care insurance so you don't buy it, but yet you're hit with another $500 a year tax? Oh, yeah, that's some really good news. That's some really smart thinking there. Let's hit the people who can't afford it even harder. Um, the rich don't have to worry about health care because they can just pay for whatever they want. The poor is being paid for by the middle class people. Middle class people are getting hit right in the middle. I mean, when you're stuck in the middle and you're you're getting killed with taxes and it's going to pay for <laughs> anyway, the people in the middle are getting killed in all this. So, you know, I'm not sure what the answer is. I don't know if it's to go and make a uh mandatory where you mandatory place like where you buy car insurance because you know they say well if you have to have a car well you have to have car insurance okay or if you're going to drive a car you have to have car insurance nobody says you have to have a car but yeah you have to have health care insurance and you know when you go to a doctor and what's a doctor visit like 200 bucks or something like that 200 dollars without health insurance so who are the people who are really making the money off of it the pharmaceutical companies and the government so your money is going to one of those two places. So what is the way that we stop doing this? The first would be is to just totally say enough's enough and cut off spending to places like Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, I can't even think of the numerous ones out there. And just go down to Trinity Medical Center. That'd be the easiest way. I mean, you can go see a doctor there for 25 bucks or go into UAB. If you cut those people out, then they're not going to get their money and they're not going to get their prescription drugs, which they need. Okay. So there's, therein lies your problem. So when you start with the drug companies and with the government, they're all in it hand in hand and each one washes the other one. So where do we, <laughs> so what, what it, again, like I said, therein lies the, the, the question the solution, sorry, the solution to the problem is the question. How do we stop it? First, government health care should be left up to the individual people to be able to shop openly across state lines. That is part of the interstate commerce laws, which is protected by the 4th, 
fifth or sixth amendment i can't think right off the top of my head so if you do away with making those laws illegal where you can purchase insurance in georgia or in indiana or in ohio then you're going to cut out a lot of your problems right there the second thing is is to take the government totally involved out of it which i propose repealing medicaid and medicare if you look at it right now, 38% of our government expenditures right now every month are being sent, spent on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Almost 40% of what you pay in tax are going out on social welfare, welfare programs. So are we going to be a social welfare state or are we going to be a capitalist state? Um, you can't have one or the other because it's going to end up crushing the middle class, which is happening right now as we go. Um, we have watched our services in government go down as our tax dollars have continued to rise, and you're getting nothing for it. And you see this every election cycle with people coming out promising, oh, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And where do we, where do we go? Which, where do we end up going? More of government is taking control of your day-to-day -day lives, and there's nothing, nobody's doing to stop it. And, you know, I find it humorous, you know, people put these little posts up there, and I'm guilty of it, too. You know, I put all the little memes out there. But how many people actually wake up in the morning and is like, okay, we've got to do something about this, you know? And I think for some extent that happened last November. But for some of my pro-Trump friends, it seems like they're like, oh, okay, the status quo is going on. And we've let the anti-Trump people come out more and more and more and more against him. Um, I'm sorry, I've kind of went on a rant there where I was going off left field. But anyway, this had a conversation uh, over dinner. But the answer to this was health care. Um, back to the problem. It's, it's neither the government's... It's not the government's place to provide you health care, nor is it my place to pay for it. So it's up, going to be up to each individual person. Now, I don't know if you need to go through your employer or just buy it, but um, we cannot continue going down the road we are because we're almost, I mean, basically we're bankrupt as a country. We do not have enough money left in our coffers to continue to pay for Medicare and Social Security and Medicaid, uh, not to count food stamps, not to count the other social welfare programs that we're on. We're either going to be a a socialist state where you get cradle to the grave care, or we're going to be a capitalist state where the free market enterprise takes uh, where the free market enterprise works. So I guess that's going to come down to each individual. I mean, we've been a capitalist nation since this nation was founded, and Wall Street was founded in 1790, 1791, I believe. Um, so. Either we're going to continue going down that, or we're going to be taken over. Look at the pictures comparing communist socialist states compared to capitalist states. And you can see the gray, cold buildings of communist states and with capitalism. Now, with that being said, <coughs> in socialist states, all people are being equal. Yeah, they're equally poor, and they equally have nothing. In capitalist states, it is the... Basically, it's based on survival of the fittest, and that may sound really bad, um, but that's basically what it comes down to, survival of the fittest. There's no way you you should not or cannot make it in this country if you don't fight hard enough. Um, but we, but anyway, back with the survival of the fittest, if you go out and you work and you, prov and you try, you're going to make it. I promise you, you will. Don't have me no sad stories. You're going to make it, but... When things are handed to you, there's no incentive to do it. So, anyway, back to the survival of the fittest. In capitalism, that's what makes it so great because the cream is going to rise to the crop and people are going to continue to fight and continue to make it better until they're up there with the brass of the world. Now, I'll never be up there with the Trumps or um, the Clintons or uh, the Obamas or... Um, the Reagans or Bushes, or we can go with whoever we want. Um, I'll never be up there with them. But as long as you continue to fight, you're going to be somewhere. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not trying to convince people who to vote for or who, 
you, you know, you should not vote for. I'm saying the road we're headed down right now is a very dangerous path because we cannot continue to spend the type of money that we're spending and expect this country to be here in another 25 or 30 years. I mean, I'm fixing to be 41 years old. I know that I will never, ever see a Social Security check. Never. Not a day in my life will I ever. For all the money that I've paid into it, it will, it will never be there. I mean, it's already been broke. It's been broke since Reagan was in office. We've been borrowing for from it for the last 40 years. Um, I forgot which economist said that Social Security was the greatest Ponzi scheme that was ever created. When it was created in the 1930s, there was one per, there was, excuse me, there was four people paying in to, for every person that was retired. Now you have one pay, one person paying in for every four people. So, you know, you can just do the math there as this can, country continues to expand and we continue to provide more services like, you know, I know I'm going to sound cold-hearted like this, like free lunches, free everything. There's no such thing as a free lunch, and so many people don't get that. When we continue to provide these free services, we are going to go broke. I mean, there's a reason we are $21 trillion in debt, and it's not shrinking, okay? And don't blame it on our military expenditures. If, you know, we got ourselves in this mess with the military, we've got to stay in it now. We're in it for the long haul. The, the social aspect of it is when you look at what we are spending in this country right now, not only is Medicare hurting, Medicaid is completely broke. I mean, we don't have any money in any states to provide Medicaid. And people don't realize that, that Medicaid is partially state-funded, so we can't even raise enough revenue here to provide for that. What do you think that means for it nationwide? And I don't want to sound like I'm cold-hearted for the older people because I understand that you, the older people have paid into it and they deserve it. Um, but I think there has to become a cutoff that uh, we have to repeal the Social Security Act and the Medicare Acts, or we're just not going to make it. I think anybody who is 29 years old or younger needs to be opted out of Medicare and Social Security and put into some type of retirement plan or retirement savings plan. Anybody between the ages of 30 to 40 should have their money given back to them and they have the option to do what they want to it. Anybody over 40 is already invested in. Um, that would be the simplest way for me to think of salvaging this because it's not going to, it's just not going to work, guys. The math is just not there. Um, uh, another thing too, I mean, when the Social Security Act was created, people were, you know, people do not live like they did today. Most, you know, you've got people living 95, 100, 105 years old, which is great. I mean, I hope I make it that long, which I never will. You know, I'm lucky if I got 15 years left. Uh, so I'll probably never see the time of any of that Social Security or Medicare. But, you know, the thing about it is they were not expected for this to last for a lifetime. So you think about somebody right now at 65 years old and they start drawing their Social Security and say they've got $10,000 saved. Well, that's really not going to last this person a long time. Um, until we go back to being a country of capitalist that is each person provides for themselves, takes for themselves, we're just going to go down this road of bankruptcy. And like I said, we're already headed there. I mean, we're $21 trillion in debt. I've not seen what the budget is for this year. Um, you know, I find it humorous that people talk about the great things that President Obama accomplished. He, you know, he did a great job of doubling the national debt. When he came into office, we were, what, about $9.5 trillion in debt. When he left, we were right at 21. You know, um, great job, Mr. President. Uh, um, you know, my hat's off to you. You know, uh, uh, Republicans are supposed to be, uh, uh, or excuse me, Democrats are supposed to be good at balancing budgets. Well, um, it was a great job there. And, you know, I don't understand why this continuing race is going on between um, Trump and the last administration. You know, I seen Hillary Clinton on TV again tonight, and she was talking about if she had won or, you know, how she would go. Well, you lost, okay? You lost. Got Get over it. I wish the whole Democratic Party would get over it. You lost the race, okay? If this thing had been reversed and Trump had won the popular vote and these and it lost the electoral college by you know as many states as what she did and us deplorables or however they want us however we're going to be called we would be getting back blasted to the high heavens you know you're not playing along you're not doing right but no because that you know hillary did it well you know we're just being you know 
kill right now. You know, it's so the the irony of it is so um, almost unfair. You know, anything Trump does, he's going to be attacked. He's going to be lambasted. You know, um, like one of the posts I put out last night. If right, right now at this point, if President Trump cured cancer, they would be saying that he was taking. Uh, um, sorry, I got to watch something. Business away from the Grim Reaper. Um, so, you know, it just really kills me. Would you be saying this if Clinton was in office? That's why I'm just asking to my liberal and even moderate friends out there. Would you feel that way? Probably not. You know, you're probably saying she did the best ever. When when you look at the record the Clinton administration has had going back to the 70s in Arkansas, you know, it's a lot worse than what people want to talk about Trump. Okay, yeah, Trump's had his trophy wives and, you know, his casino marriages uh or his casinos uh, has nothing to do compared to that so i really wish we would get off who won who lost this past election because we're fixing to come up in the midterms right now and for the people who don't realize that the trump voters if i was trump i would be going after everybody who's not getting on board because i'll be going to these republicans and saying, hey look I carried your district last time by 65, 70% of the vote. If you get on board or I'm going to get you out of there. And you put a total Trump team in there and maybe we can get some legislation passed. So far he's did, you know, for the people who say he's been a disaster, he did everything he swore he was going to do, guys. Everything he said. Okay? He told you he was going to build a wall. He got $1.6 billion appropriated with it so far. Okay? He told you he was going to he was going to make a travel ban. He enacted a travel ban. However, it's tied up in course right now, but still, he did that. All right? The TPP. He told you he was going to pull us out of that. We're out of the TPP. All right? The Paris Peace Accords. He told you we was going to pull out of the Paris uh, the. Paris Peace Accords. We did that. We rolled back the regulations that the Obama administration put in place with the coal jobs. Coal jobs are coming back in record numbers, okay? He did that. Um, uh, he is now putting forth a tax plan that is going to roll back corporate taxes, make your deduction twice as high as what it was, so you're going to get a huge tax break. He did that, okay? He has done everything that he said he was going to do. Um, the uh, uh, renegotiating the treaty with NAFTA. And finally, we have a president who is standing up to North Korea, not letting some third rate rogue nation dictate to us how we're, what we're going to do. I mean, they're about one nuclear test from a flyover, I promise you. And, you know, people say, oh, millions of people are going to get killed. No, it's not. We'd roll through them like a hot knife through butter, okay? I was in the Army. I was in Iraq. I was in Afghanistan. I know what goes on there. So, I mean, I find it funny that, you know, because we finally have a president who says, hey, we're not going to put up with this. Uh, you know, now they're, um, uh, <laughs> now they're going to say, oh, uh, sorry, I lost my whole train of thought there. Because the president's not going to put up with this. Oh, well, he's playing with brinksmanship. He's playing with fire. You know, he's going to get all of us killed. No, playing with these guys and letting them tell the United States what to do is going to get us all killed, okay? We didn't do this back in the old days. We did fight wars like that, like that either. I mean, would fly over right there could take out their whole regime, but it would all be over with. But yeah, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to play nice, you know. We're supposed to do what, what the Demer what the um, what we're not supposed to harm anybody. We're supposed to do us nice. But there's gonna come a time when, um, you know, when I was a little kid. I remember there was this guy that was kind of bullying me, and my dad was like, you know. I'm not going to always be there for you, son. He said, one day you're going to have to stand up for yourself. And I listened to him. And he didn't really tell me what to do, but I knew what he said. And so the next day the guy started bullying me, and I hit him. I hit him with everything I had. I mean, as hard as I could. And I'm not going to say that I won the fight, but I can tell you this, the guy didn't mess with me no more. So that's the same point that we have to take with these other rogue nations. I mean, you realize right now in NATO, we are protecting all of Europe. And we are spending, for every dollar that is spent protecting NATO, we put 89 cents into it. We're paying 89% of it, and we're protecting these countries. I mean, so, I mean, I guess the point that I'm getting to is it, we cannot continue to pay for these countries 
when they're not giving us anything back. I mean, most of our money goes overseas. I mean, the money that we're spending right now to take care of people in, I'm not even going to get into that right there. I want to go back to the military thing right now. Um, as far as the uh, um, UN, we have, uh, what, a hundred and, I don't even know, a hundred and something countries. And I think the last budget I seen that we was paying 91% of that. We're paying 91% to protect these people. They should be paying us for our takes, for our guns, for our planes, for our troops, for our people that are on the ground, for our food over there, you know, to protecting them. If we just became a Ron Pollock nation, 